Hi there folks and welcome back to another episode of Solar City Garage. We're on our Model T motor here. Um, today I wanted to talk show a little bit in depth on uh, when you put new valves in. Of course if you've been watching the series we've uh, we've uh, reamed the valve guides and we repaired a broken or damaged valve guide. We reamed out the lifter holes here. Uh, got that all taken care of. Roughly got all that cleaned up. Um, what we're doing today is we're temporarily putting some things together to do some fitting. Um, we also went with the adjustable lifters, the two wrench kind. Um, seemed to be the only thing that was available right now. So, so what we did, we temporarily, we flipped the block upside down and we put all the lifters in. That way gravity helps hold it in. Before you do that, see this bolt that screws into the lifter. When those come, they usually are not screwed clear in. Okay, so it takes two three-eighths wrenches, and you want to carefully screw those to where they're clear down. Now the shoulder of the bolt does not touch the shoulder of the lifter, okay? There's probably all three sixteenths of an inch there, maybe. But you'll feel it. I, I mean, and it turns hard because they're, they, they're a locking bolt. But I like to have them turn clear down. Don't go yanking on them or forcing them. You'll feel it. It'll turn hard, it'll turn stiff, turn stiff, and then it'll stop. And that's, that's good enough. Um, the other thing I want to talk about is when you buy new valves, a lot of times what you don't know is, is that they're too long. Um, they do that on purpose so that if you're trying to fix whatever you need, there's extra material there. But 99% of the time, you're going to have to get rid of some material, especially with adjustable lifters. Okay, uh, at, now to back up here just a minute, after we put the lifters in when the block was upside down, we temporarily installed our camshaft back in. We didn't put the uh, locking bolts back in. Um, we did line up the timing marks. Um, when we do the new gear, I'll show you how to do that, but on this particular one, on the crankshaft gear, there's a little Ford script, and on the camshaft gear, there's a dot. You just line those two up so that the tooth goes in the slot with the dot. Um, it isn't like a lot of modern day engines where there's several things to line up, and this has to be in this phase and that phase. These, those two things are lined up, you're good, okay? So you slide your cam in when the engine's upside down. Um, just make sure it's centered. You also have to make sure the center bearing is somewhat centered. You could do that by just putting the lock bolt in, but I just reached in and made sure it was centered because one of the lifters, if that bearing isn't centered, will hit that and you won't get a true reading. So the next thing we do is whatever cylinder you're going to work on, you want to bring the piston to the top and as you're turning it, you want to watch the lifters. There's, there's, on one of the strokes, it would be the compression stroke, there is a situation where both valves are closed so that it builds compression. So when the piston's at the top, uh, uh, because it's a four-stroke four engine, uh, when you get it to the pistons basically at the top, and both of these are clear down. What I like to do is grab the flywheel and rock the motor back and forth and physically put my fingers on. And you shouldn't feel them go up and down at all, okay? The other thing you can do is reach up under here and where I'm pushing the lifter up here, both of those, you should be able to feel the cam lobe. And it should be pointing towards the down. It won't be straight up and down, but if it's um, in the downward fashion, then it's on the heel of the cam, so. So anyway, um, so here's where a lot of videos don't say, you know, what to do about the valves being too long. I mean, they're hardened. They're supposed to be stainless steel. Um, so let's show what the deal is, okay? I have been working on these, fitting these. Now, I have been fitting these, and I'm going to mark, of course, where each valve come out of, which we already know because we already did um, work them in by hand. I'm also going to mark each lifter uh, because these could be screwed in just a little bit different on each one, okay? 
Um, you don't have to do it this way, but I just as soon get everything fit and take it back apart, do the final cleaning, then do final assembly. Okay, that's just my way. You do it different, that's great. Your way doesn't matter. We each got to have our own way. So, so I'll show you. Um, so here's one I've been working on. Right, here's the valve. Let's drop it in the hole. And you would think, you know, oh, I bought all new parts. This is what it should be. Yep, drop in. It's seated. It's sitting down like it should on the block. And when I put my finger on it, I can't turn it. You can feel that down here too. If you pull down a little bit, you can't turn it. Okay. Now, let's just go to this next cylinder that I haven't done anything with. Drop that valve in. Both of these lifters are clear down. Oh, well geez, look how high that sticks up. Oh, and look, look I can spin it. Huh. Oh crap, now what? Right? So, it isn't like you can take a file and just file these down. But in a minute we'll get to how we do that. Um, so now what? How do I know where to start and stop, right? Um, that's why we want these things cleared out. Okay. Most Model T engines with uh, modern valves like this um, don't run the clearances like the old cast iron valves. Um, these run between 10 and 12 thousandths clearance. Uh, the cast valves would grow in length with heat quite a bit. The old two-piece valves and these will not. Um, so the tolerances are a lot, lot closer. So here we run into another problem. We've, we've changed a lot of things here. We've got new lifters, we've, we've done the valve seats, new valves, so there's, and we fit them the best we can, but there's still some fitting that needs to be done by natural wear, okay? And uh, there's a little trick here. What I like to do to leave some future adjustment, either direction. These screws and these lifters are pretty long, okay? I need to quit saying okay. You ever notice that? I must have just bought a whole new box of okays and I'm not out of them yet. Sorry about that. So, how much do we take off the valves? The kind of the rule of thumb, if you put new seats in here and everything's up way high where it belongs, you put the new valve in, with adjustable lifters, the rule of thumb's always been around 100 thousandths. I know it seems like a lot, but it's not. Uh, but here, like I say, we didn't put new seats in. We've ground the, valve, ground the seats, you know, got new valves, new lifters, old camshaft, so we got a lot of variables. With these screwed clear down, I like to push down on this valve, and when I'm done clearancing the stem, I like to have an 18 thousandth feeler gauge. Just fit in there nice and free, okay? Everybody's going, wait a minute, why do you want 18 thousandths? We only need 10 to 12. What, what are you doing? You took off too much. Well, motor will just be, you know, done. No, that's not the case. We have plenty of screw to screw up out of here to make up that extra 6 to 8 thousandths. Reason I want more than the 10 to 12 is what happens if one of these works those, their way down in the seat just a little bit, finish with wearing in. Uh, or something in the lifter height changes to where the valve gets tight, okay? So, then what? Then, when you go to readjust it in the car, if you've got a problem, and the valve's too tight, well, guess what? you got to pull the head. There goes the head gasket. Uh, pull the valve out, take it back, grind it off, put it back in, and keep fiddling around with it. Where this way, at least we've got approximately eight thousandths of an inch of play, of leeway, so we can adjust either direction. Um, this isn't a exact science. You could have more than that 18. Um, that's just something I've always done. So that's why we do that. So now we understand what, what clearance we need to end up with here. And then when we get all done, we will set the final clearance using the two wrenches. All right, so what are we going to do about this valve that's sticking way out of there? How are we going to do that? Well, you stay tuned, and I'll show you how I'm going to do it. All right, be back in a moment. Hey there, folks, and welcome back. All right, here we are on the business end. 
of our valve grinding machine. This is the end to do the stems. Because um, when you grind a valve, let's say, and you're going to reuse it, of course you're using, removing material. So you need to compensate by shortening the stem. Or in this case, stems just need to be shortened. So, as you can see, this moves back and forth up here across the face of this stone. There is a, like a V-block in here with a wedge to hold the valve down. Notice there's a stopper there. Now this carriage here with the stone on it is made to go back and forth when you're using the other end of the machine. Um, but we want that stationary. We won't be using the slide handle. So what I like to do is take the valve, slide it in that V-block, slide it against that stop, bring your wedge in, Tighten your wedge in. Okay, now there your valve is against the stop. Now on this dial here, just like on a lathe or a mill or whatever, there's thousands, okay? When you're doing this, you want the zeros to match. There's this big thumb wheel here. You want the zeros to match. Now what you'll have to do is slide your carriage over, because now we know this is against the stop. This is at zero. You bring this over and it should just touch the stone, okay? And then on the back, back here, there is a lock that you tighten. So this can't move anymore. <clears throat> and what we'll be moving is this apparatus with the V-block. By turning this knob, it will be pushing the valve, however many thousands you show here, towards the stone, okay? When you're turning that to go forward, you need to have it between the stop and the stone. If you're down here and you turn it and hits the stop, it'll physically push the valve back in the V-block just a little bit. And then your numbers here, you're not going to be able to keep track of. If you take off a little too much, it's not the end of the world, okay? Because we have adjustable lifters. I mean, you just can't let it ruin your day. But the more careful you are, the less problems down the road. I'm not going to run the coolant flow on this to, for video purposes so that you can see. So we're going to go slow. The valve is going to get hot. Yes, it is. But it's not going to be like turning blue kind of hot, okay? So we should be fine that way. The other thing that my dad always taught me is before you, because right now we're basically the same, but you can feel some resistance on the stone, is to turn this to negative thousands. See there, it don't touch anymore. When, when we start and we turn the machine on. That way we're not just plowing into the stone accidentally in case we've screwed up or something's moved. That way we don't ruin the cutting wheel. All right. So um, <clears throat> the other valves I've done, the average has been about 130 to 150 thousandths um, to get our 18 thousandths clearance. Uh, of course, that one that we fixed the um, valve guide on and the seat had to be down in farther, I believe that was like 225 thousandths. So quite a bit, still plenty of valve left, okay? Still plenty of end to uh, hold the pin and the keeper and all that stuff. So Anyway, enough yakking. Let's, uh, let's take some off here and then uh, we'll go from there. All right, here we go. So right there is zero. You can hear it just touched. So let's keep going. I do about two thousand at a time. You notice I run it back and forth kind of quickly so that we keep the stone wear even. I go off completely on the inside and completely on the outside. Normally there's coolant flowing out of this hose and splash and spraying all over. There's 
ten thousand. Every once in a while, you'll see some sparks. That's okay. We're not hurting that valve at all. Patience is a virtue. I've seen guys turn 15 thousandths on here and just mow it across the stone. And that's fine. It just isn't the way I like to do things. thousandths. I'm going to do fifty thousandths and then reset this back at zero and reset it on the stopper. It's kind of the limitation of what this slide does freely. You can pick these machines up pretty cheap if you go to an auction or you've probably got a buddy that's either got one in his garage, anybody that does old tractors, you know, you'll find somebody that's got one. There's 30. And once in a while, it's good to let the valve, without turning it, go down and touch the stopper. Then you know nothing has moved. turn this the valve's got to be up off the stopper and not touching the stone. There's 40,000. So we're just going slow. There's no hurry here. If you have to do this in a hurry, you should probably sell the Model T because everything on that thing, patience, patience, patience. with an angle grinder, you know, you can grind the end off, do it with a cutoff wheel, um, you're not going to file it. You could, right there, 50 thousandths. All right, so we took off 50 thousandths. Now let's roll this back to zero in this little carriage rolls back 50 thousandths and then we loosen the wedge here slide the valve up against the stopper retighten our wedge make sure it goes good off the stopper roll it back about three thousandths and let's do her again Notice there's no big clouds of smoke, no, you know, the motor's not drawn down. We're doing about two thousandths at a time. It's very tempting to crank on her. I'm sorry, that's 15. Long side arrow.
Okay, there's another 50. So we've taken 100 thousandths off that stem, okay? I shut this off. You always got to remember to roll this back to zero. When I was a kid, when we actually did valve jobs, <clears throat> that's what I would do is forget, and then it'd get all screwed up, and, well, you know, you got always got to lecture. But, hey, that's how you learn. So we've taken 100 thousandths off. Let's take the valve out. And then... Uh, since we've learned, because I've cheated and already done some of them, we can safely take another 30 thousandths off. Okay, so let's do that. So we're back at zero. Put the valve in. Put the wedge in there, push it down. Tighten the set screw. Roll it back. Turn it on. Get her up to zero here. There we go. Zero. Zero. Touch the stone, so we don't want to open the open. Rolling up, probably taking off more, but I just want to show how to check that. This is a lot more fun with the fluid going. You can't see what you're doing. You've got a lot of this in the air. It's all over everything. <laughs> but if the fluid going, you can go a little faster. Okay, we're coming up on our 30,000th mark here, right there. So we want to run this to get a little finish on it until it basically gets quiet. Let's shut it off. Now, on the edge of this, there's a little bit of a burr, not much. I'm going to take this back, put it on my I'm going to use my grinder, my emery grinder, and I'm bench grinder, sorry, and I'm going to just taper the edge of that just ever so slightly, and then I'm going to put it on the other side, and I've got a wire brush, and I'm going to clean that up, but that's in my back room, so I'll be right back. Okay, folks, so here we are back at the engine, a little different angle here. We've got our valve, we've taken 130 thousandths off. Let's drop it in the hole and see how close we are. Ooh, well, it sounded like it hit bottom pretty good. What's the way to tell? Take your finger, top of the valve, and it doesn't rotate. You reach down here and pull down, it doesn't rotate. That means it's touching the seat. So that means we're close. We're probably within 18 thousandths. So let's check our, let's check our uh, clearance here. No, nope, an 18 won't go in there. Let's pick the valve up. Set this in. This is something you learn by doing this. So I've got the 18 in there. You can see I can spin the valve. Okay. So pull that out. And you heard it snap down. So it is just touching. So my suggestion would be to take off between 18 and 20 thousandths. And then we'd be really in the ballpark. So I'm going to go back to the machine and do that. And then uh, we'll be back. <clears throat> okay, folks, I'm back. I took off uh, 20 thousandths. You know, it's kind of a, it's not really shooting from the hip, but it's just what you learn as you go through here. So let's put the valve in. Drops down in, makes a good sound. Valve doesn't turn, so that means it's sitting on the seat. Lifter's clear down. Let's take our 18 thousandths feeler gauge, and it slips in there just like butter. So there we go. We are uh, fit good enough. We have extra clearance um, so that we can, uh, golly, get towards final assembly. So in the next video, I'm going to, we're going to uh, take out the valves. We'll keep them marked. We're going to remove the camshaft, we'll remove the lifters. We will mark them as well. Then we're going to do a good final cleaning on the block. And then, we get to put, it, put the new cam gear on, put the cam in, uh, the lifters in permanently, put the two lock bolts in. Then we will adjust the valves without the springs. And then we will install the springs and the keepers. And then we will double check them. And then the valve train is done. So uh, at least we are uh, moving forward here, folks. So stay tuned. Be sure to... Uh, like this video, 
subscribe, ring that bell so that you get a chance to see if uh, we ever do get this thing put back together, which we will, uh, and go ahead and comment. Uh, it, it, it's fine. It's kind of cool to talk to people. So, Anyway, thanks for watching. See you next time.